Hello everybody. So uh, yeah, as you can see, there is some uh, technical difficulties right now. Um, but my name is Keith. I am a professional videographer down in Somerset, uh, right down southwest, so about 40 minutes from Bristol, uh, if you don't know where Bridgewater is. Um, I have no niche in what I do. I film everything from uh, documentaries, which I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, I do promo videos, I do events, I do everything. Uh, I was recently in the Definition magazine, if anybody knows what the Definition magazine is, uh, they did an article on me and they called me the everyman uh, because I have no niche. So uh, that is what I do. Um, I think that I'm going to show you what I do now and then we'll, we'll dive straight into some things. Before that, just to let everybody know, I do have ADHD, okay? So I can't sit down. I'm a bit scatty and a bit all over the place, okay? So just, uh, this might be a bit different to what anybody's ever done before. So uh, are we ready? Are we able to play that? You're going to sync it. Okay, what, what we're going to do... Okay, hopefully this comes through. Okay. That is me. That is what I do, uh, I guess in a nutshell. Um, as you can see, I have no niche. I've, I don't know if anybody noticed quickly, but I have uh, filmed people like Snoop Dogg, for example. That day was crazy. I filmed the uh, Prime Minister of uh, Israel in the day, and then in the evening I had to go over and film Snoop Dogg. So that was probably one of my weirdest days I've ever done. Um, I don't have too long. Uh, to teach you and talk to you what I'm going to do today. Um, and normally, I'll be honest with you, I do wing a lot of what I do. Uh, that's just part of who I am, that's part of my ADHD and what I do. I tend to work a little bit better like that. 
um, but I have wrote some stuff down which we will go through. And I'm going to talk to you today about a documentary that I've recently just filmed. Um, if we can just get the start of it up, we will go through. Um, uh, just pause it a second for me, please. Perfect. So, this is, Dan, this is a boy called Daniel. He's 15 years old uh, and he is autistic. And we have just basically filmed a documentary on him. Um, he's into Bigfoot, which is a very strange one. Uh, can't say I'm fully into Bigfoot myself, but uh, it was very interesting to do. Um, he basically found traces of old world monkey in a footprint that he found in a forest near me. Um, and a production company hired me to be a DOP with my team to come along and create this, this content for them. And what I want to sort of teach you today is just what we did for this documentary and how we created it and, and basically like, I, I, just play, play the start of it for me. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go down it that we'll go down that route. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna tell you a little story on how me and the guys landed this really cool documentary. It's a little bit quirky, it's a little bit weird, but I'm gonna go through everything that happened, tell you about the equipment, the lighting setups we used for interviews, and everything else in between. So the documentary that we landed is basically following an autistic boy called Daniel, who is into Bigfoot. And he grew up watching all of the Bigfoot programs, especially in America. There's these three sort of famous Bigfoot presenters. There was Ronnie, Renee, and Ryan. They flew over. And what it was really about was sort of teaching Daniel what they would do to find Bigfoot, find Sasquatches. The reason this whole documentary came about was because Daniel was out in the woods with his nan. He found a footprint. He took DNA of the footprint and sent it to like the eDNA people in like, I think it was the Netherlands or something like that. They basically came back and said there was traces of old world monkey. We were basically just doing a documentary following his journey with autism, how he finds being out in the woods, like a sort of safe place to be. And then to have these famous people from the Bigfoot world come over who he's watched and followed for a very long time. It's just a very nice sort of environment to be in. Stop. No, pause. Stop. Perfect. Thank you. So it's paused on a nice shot of my face with no hat on. I am known for having a backwards hat. So there's me, a very rare picture of me with no hat. Okay. Um, it's a little bit easier for me to create this video and show you the video like that rather than me talk. One, because of my ADHD, I tend to go off on loads of different subjects and I end, to, I end up talking for about four hours. I actually have workshops with CVP um, and they are four hours and I tend to still go over there. That's a little bit different to this. I actually teach uh, how to do interview setups, which I'm about to show you on here. Now, the thing with this is basically creating compelling content for a viewer um, and what it's like to be a, a DOP on set. This, the production company, we met two weeks before this, so I didn't know what was going on. I ha we had no time to prep or anything, so I want to try and teach people that within this industry, you need to work on the fly and you need to know exactly what you're doing because we're in a forest, we can't control the lighting, we can't control the weather, and you need to be able to know what you can do under these circumstances to be able to still create that compelling content for people, for a viewer. Now, none of this has actually been released. You are the first people to actually see this. I got approval from the production company who hired me. Um, they are gonna be trying to sell the documentary. They went to Cannes recently to try and sell it and stuff, and we're going to Seattle in August, um, where they filmed like Twilight and stuff like that around Mount Olympus, um, to f and then go down to some indigenous people because they've spotted Bigfoot before and things like that, just to make the part two. Um, but I'm literally just gonna go through how we did the interview setups and what equipment we used on, that f on the fly. Um, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, am I allowed to swear? 
ish. There's no kids, okay. There's quite a lot of what we call shitty rigs going on um, because we, it was obviously on the fly and stuff. If you pl play a little bit more, please. Stop, right. perfect. I'm trying to think of it. Uh, I mean, this is just filler stuff. So I actually no, 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 no. was going to make this for YouTube. This is just a little bit of filler, um, just to break up the, the video. And this also shows you, can you just pause it a sec for me, please? Thank you. Um, what I'm also, I'm doing like a double-edged thing here. So what I'm trying to do is with me teaching you about compelling content on how we filmed it, this video itself, when you actually watch this on YouTube, should be some sort of compelling content. So for example, we had the opening, tells you exactly what, we're gonna, what you're going to be watching, and then I will break it up with like raw footage and stuff, just to make it so it feels like you're actually sort of there with us during uh, our filming stuff. So yeah, if you play again for me, please. It's so weird. I've got you can't really hear much here, but um, the sound is a little bit low. So I was recently filming for a client in the woods. We noticed that there was a group of people and I could hear them talking about like production and flying people in. They could see me with my FX6 in my hand and they basically come up to me and they said, are you a DOP? I said, yes. They're like, are you local? I said, yes. And long story short, they offered me the job and I bought on Dan and Sam. Sam was second camera, Dan was BTS and third camera. So we had the A cam was the FX6 and I used the DZO Kata zooms. I mainly used the 38 to 80, absolutely phenomenal lens. Picture out of it is great. I also then used the Sony Zeiss 35 millimeter 1.4. That is my favorite lens. That's my go-to for like majority of things. I needed a bit more of the autofocus for some of the walking stuff. The Kata zooms I did use on the first day because I wanted to use them, but then I realized the manual focus wasn't what I sort of needed. So then ended up coming back to the Sony for the autofocus. For the B cam, we used an FX3 and we had the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 and then we had the Samyang 35 T1.5. Then we started using the Rode Wireless Pros, hooked everybody up with some microphones because this, the FX6 can do like six audio channels. But then it just started getting a bit messy. So I stripped things back and I just kept the Rode NTG4 Plus as a directional microphone on the camera. And we just used that and that just worked perfectly. Perfect. Sit Cool, thank you. So that's basically the equipment that we used. It's easier for me to show you what we use rather than me just telling you. So again, I'm creating compelling content for you guys to watch. It's a little bit nicer than me just telling you what we had. You can physically see exactly what we used. Um, I do, so every brand that I mentioned in the video, I work with. Uh, I feel very privileged about that. Uh, worked very hard to, to get some of those brands. So obviously showed my support in this video, but also at the same time, these are brands that I already had their gear. I fully stand behind them. I'm not someone that just takes on anybody. Um, so uh, yeah, absolutely love Sony. Steven's here from Sony as well. He's there, he's watching me. Um, so long story short with this is nothing was planned. I didn't know what was going on. It was a sort of, we're gonna be filming in the woods for four days, bring your equipment, let's go. And the production company come from a film, like a short film direction. They'd never done documentaries before. I've done documentaries before. Um, probably my biggest one was, uh, I did a documentary in New York. Um, I followed uh, an entrepreneur who lost loads of weight. Um, we put the documentary out uh, on Amazon Prime during COVID in 2020. Um, and became the most watched fitness documentary of 2020 on Amazon Prime. Won a bunch of awards for it, so felt very happy about that. Half of it is actually filmed on an iPhone, uh, not by me, uh, by him. Um, he filmed absolutely everything, so I had about two terabytes of footage to, to go through with his iPhone stuff. Um, but again, like that, and with this, and what it seems to be a thing within documentaries, is you can't plan it out so much. So you need to approach things from a, from a viewer's point of view rather than like maybe a DOP or something. And you need to think about 
what an audience would want to get out of the story. And that's the, obviously the approach that we did with this. And I had a bit of a clash with the production company because they came from a film direction, like I said. Um, but then they started to trust me and trust my judgment and trust what I was trying to do with creating compelling content and, and trying to tell this story about Daniel. And they wanted to focus a lot on the Bigfoot aspect. And I disagreed. And I said we should focus more on Daniel and his autism. And they agreed in the end. And, and that's basically what we ended up doing. Um, but if we can play a little bit more for me, please, Matt. Thank you. Again, this is, this is just filler. Um, so <laughs> I always have a laugh on set. Um, obviously, I take things seriously. I'm a professional, but I'm, <laughs> my guys are great. We just end up... I think that's one of the biggest... <laughs> that has got to be one of the funniest things you've ever one said. Of, one of the that. biggest things, I think, is working with a great team. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, my no. guys are hilarious. No. I, abso I absolutely love them. So the next the section will be, of will be coming up. Literally, nothing air is still in that. It's the only thing in a burger. On the first day, we got everything set up. We filmed Daniel sort of setting up his tent, and then we did some can we, interviews. Can we, can we pause it? With. Cool. So, what I want to go through with everyone here is so this this was the first interview we did. Again, rocked up in the middle of a forest. And it's up to me to go, right, uh, where are we going to film these interviews to? Like, what are we going to do? What's going to look the best for an audience? How are we going to tell this story best? And effectively, when I seen him setting up his tent, I then said, let's basically do an interview outside his tent. It's telling a story to the audience. It's him with his tent. It has all of his equipment and stuff there. So, so that's ended up what, what we did. I've done this diagram. Um, these diagrams seem to go down really well on Instagram. If you want to know where I did it, it's on the Nan Light, uh, the Nan Link app. If you've heard of Nan Light, uh, Nan, they do they do their own app, and uh, you can create these type of diagrams here. And what you can do is you can actually link the lights. And if this is your main setup, you can actually go into the diagram and turn the lights on and off through the diagram, which is fantastic. It's really really cool. Um, so as you can see here. What I will explain in the video in a minute is um, we actually use the sun as a rim light or a hair light or how, whatever people want to call it these days. Um, yes, I did have a little bit of a pavo tube here just for, uh, because the sun was actually, this was during midday and we needed to get the interviews done at that time. There was no other time to do these interviews. And obviously, as we know, with video, being videographers, the sun at midday is horrendous, right? It's too harsh, and so that's obviously why we then brought in this black flag. Again, a bit of shitty rig. It was just like a sheet that we had at the time and just rigged that up just to create some... Um, to stop, basically, the sun being so harsh on him. Um, I will explain in the video in a minute. Use the 300B with some diffusion. So we didn't have a softbox uh, for this. Now, usually with a softbox, you need to get the light quite close to somebody's face for it to be soft. I've got five minutes. Oh, my days. Okay, sorry. See, this is what I mean. This is why I created the video, and now I'm not to... Play the video. Play the video. With him and Renee and Ryan and Ronnie and just did, like, introductions to who they are, basically. So we used the sun as the hair light. I had a 500B, and we set up, like, a sort of silk muslin type of thing, but it was so windy and we had to try and tape it down and we had to like put bands on top of it to try and keep it still and then it got covered in mud and everything. But we basically shone the 500B through this silk muslin to act as like the soft box so we had some nice soft light on his face. We filmed them meeting and then we just followed Daniel in the woods with them basically. Day two, we then had to do a night shoot. I think it was like 8 p.m. till 5 a.m. or something like that. That was hilarious. Everybody was so tired because the sleeping pattern was just completely off. But the best thing through that night for me, obviously filming like the reactions of things and, and filming the actual documentary was fun. But for me, the most fun was the fact that I finally bought myself an easy rig. Because it was nighttime and we needed some sort of light on their faces, I put a Nanlite Pavotube 6C to the end of the Easy Rig to act as like a key light for when I'm filming them and it worked 
perfectly and I was so happy with it. I just loved like rigging stuff up to the easy rig and it was just absolutely phenomenal. So that worked a treat. So day three, we then went back the same route as we did in the night time. It was raining that day. So again, my favorite thing, I had my easy rig on and I attached my umbrella attachment to it. My God, did it come in handy on that day. So it's raining. I have the umbrella on and I am completely fine. It was just really cool to sort of have like my FX6 on it and know that I was going to be protected with this umbrella. It's very big, it's very wide. It also covers the backpack part of the Easy Rig as well. So that was absolutely brilliant. And on the fourth day, we just had 10 interviews or so. We interviewed like Daniel's family. We interviewed Daniel, the three R's, his granddad. We just dove deep into people's feelings and Daniel's family and their struggles with Daniel with his autism. That sort of summed up the documentary. And I think when it comes out, it's not going to be so much about Bigfoot. I think it's, it's literally more about Daniel and dealing with his autism. You could probably stop it there to be fair it's just me breaking a tree and then i end up and then i and then i finish it i mean maybe not on that picture but whatever you want to do i guess <laughs> no no i'm only joking it's fine uh you can play in the background if you want but um so i've only got like two minutes now uh i so i'm gonna read this so i did write this out uh specifically for today and it's a bit easier if i if i read what i've wrote out because i don't have much time um so i've put here Creating compelling content for videography is an art that blends storytelling, technical skill and creativity. It begins with a clear understanding of the narrative you want to convey, whether it's an event, promotional video or a short film or documentary. Crafting a strong story involves identifying key moments, emotions and messages that resonate with the audience. So exactly what I'm trying to say in this video when we started focusing more on Daniel rather than the Bigfoot stuff. I just feel like that was more of a, when a viewer wants to watch this as a documentary, it's going to be more compelling for them. Uh, uh, I've put technical, um, the technical side of things is basically like essential. So I teach this at my workshops at CVP, but I've put, this includes mastering camera techniques, lighting, sound, color grading, and editing. Using varied camera angles, smooth transitions, and well-timed cuts can significantly enhance the visual impact. High quality audio and appropriate music selection also play crucial roles in setting the tone and mood. Uh, creativity is at the heart of compelling videography. This means experimenting with different angles and styles, perspectives, and innovate techniques to keep the content fresh and engaging. Attention to detail, such as capturing candid moments and subtle expressions as authentic authenticity and depth to a video. So when I talked about then that during the interviews, I, we had somebody asking the questions, but then I jumped in and I wanted to show a lot more emotion and I will ask a bit more of the hard hitting stuff. And we actually filmed Daniel's granddad and one of the Bigfoot uh, scientists. Uh, they actually cried. Uh, we, like I asked them some, some sort of home hitting questions. And, and that's sort of what you want to feel connected to someone when you want to watch a documentary, in my opinion. Um, I won't bother with the rest because I'm running out of time. Yeah. Oh, I can keep going. Oh, okay. I can keep going. Look at that. Um, and then I've put, lastly, understanding your audience and tailoring the content to their preferences ensures greater engagement and impact. Uh, by combining these elements, a videographer can create content that not only captures attention, but also leaves a lasting impression. Um, so, I mean, because I don't have much time, if anybody does, I I'm going to like go off to the side. So if anyone wants to ask any questions and stuff, uh, please do so. Uh, I'm here for another few hours anyway. Um, or you can just follow me on Instagram and stuff like that. I'm not going to plug myself. That's not, that's not me. But um, yeah, if you want to speak to me, just, just come to the side and, and we'll go down that. I hope that was okay in the time. I haven't got much time. Okay, thank you. <laughs>